Intimacy. Real intimacy is about knowing and being known. It's being so closely connected to another person that there's no need for pretense or self-protection. No need to hold the other person at arm's length out of fear of pain or rejection. In this video, Russ and I will share the importance of emotional, spiritual, and physical connection. And stay to the end where we discuss how we resolved the rejection dance when it came to physical intimacy. When most people hear the word intimacy, they think of sex. But intimacy involves more than just the physical aspect. It includes emotional and spiritual too. To pursue only one or two aspects fails to produce the oneness God wants for us. And when we don't pursue all three, we're left only partially fulfilled, or worse, frustrated and lonely. It's why we caution couples not to primarily engage with the physical, because it eventually dies a slow death when there's no emotional and spiritual intimacy to back it up. Let's address emotional intimacy first. And what we mean by emotional intimacy is friendship, because most of our married life happens outside the bedroom. Your spouse should be your best friend, a trusted confidant, and an ally who always has your back, mm -hmm. someone genuinely committed to your well-being. And building that kind of emotional intimacy or friendship requires time, shared experiences, and consistency it requires a desire to truly know your spouse, to be curious about them, and to share your entire self with them. Much of what we've covered during Thrive Online will help you with emotional intimacy if you put it into practice. Here's what we've reviewed. Working on you first. Looking in the mirror at your own behavior. Making sure you're an emotionally safe person. Communicating your desires in healthy ways while learning and prioritizing your spouse learning about family patterns that have shaped you both. That one has really helped us. Working on communication skills and healing past hurts. All these things contribute to a heightened sense of emotional connection. So what are some applicable ways to achieve this emotional connection with your spouse? We have a weekly exercise in which we discuss three topics. First, we review the schedule for the upcoming week. Then we discuss our hopes and dreams and we finish with reviewing our frustrations and celebrations from the past week. Now sharing our hopes and dreams draws us closer together, especially when we try to make them come true. And discussing the frustrations and celebrations also helps us to know what is weighing down our spouse. And it ends with encouragement. Other ways to achieve emotional connection with each other can be to do something your spouse enjoys. For me, it would be Danielle going to a local high school football game and for me, it would be Russ joining me going to CrossFit. So ask for your spouse's thoughts and opinions. If you struggle like most of us do with conversations limited to logistics and the kids, there's a great app called Gottman Card Decks, and it gives you hundreds of questions to ask each other. It's a fun date night app, and it continues to deepen your friendship. So do something fun together. For us, it would be family time or dinner with friends, or watching our favorite comedies together. Or for us, our favorite thing to do is to take long walks. Now next up is spiritual intimacy, which may be the most neglected aspect of marriage. Yeah, growing spiritually together may be a new concept to some of you, or you may feel that your spouse is further along in the spiritual growth than you are. And if that's you, then we'd first encourage you to talk about your hesitancy or tensions in this area with your spouse. Now, I've been in small groups with a lot of men over the years who were hesitant to pray out loud in a group or even one-on-one -on -one with their wives because they didn't want to say the wrong things. And I totally get that. Most of us don't want to appear like we don't know what we're doing. But if that's you, I'd encourage you to take the leap. Prayer is simply talking to God. God isn't grading us on the words we choose. He just wants us to come to Him and to talk to Him. So don't miss this opportunity to invite him into your life and marriage. Here are some other ways that you and your spouse can pursue spiritual intimacy. Attend church together. You'll both hear a message together and have the chance to discuss how it applies to your lives. Or join a small group. We're self-confessed groupies. We've been a part of and led many groups over the years. 
And there's something very powerful in being in community with other couples. Let's face it, we all need encouragement as we grow and groups provide a consistent place for encouragement and growth. And you often find that other couples share the same struggles you do. And being in a group provides a chance for you to be an encouragement to others as they grow. And finally, maybe you could serve together. Find ways for you and your spouse to serve others. This allows you to blend your strengths and abilities for the good of the community. Now, for the part you've all been waiting for, physical intimacy. And by no means is this easy to share. Now the words physical intimacy may not be part of your daily vocabulary. Often we just simply think of this area of marriage as sex. And it's interesting that for many couples, something that is a big part of marriage can be so difficult to talk about. That's true. We recognize that when it comes to this aspect of marriage, there may be tensions involved. And that's why the things we've talked about in our previous weeks is so important. When we've established safety in marriage and dealt with our past hurts, we should be able to talk about this important area of marriage with our spouse. And when you talk about this area of your marriage, remember one key part. This is about your marriage. Resist the urge to compare your relationship to others around you or ways you see sex portrayed in the world around us or even what you see on TV. Right, so with that context in mind, here is something that Russ and I have learned about each other as we've talked about how to prioritize this area of physical oneness in our marriage. In order to experience physical oneness the way God intended, we need more. We need real connection and it doesn't start in the bedroom. We need the harmony that comes from a good spiritual connection and the friendship that comes with a good emotional connection and the romance that comes with anticipating where things can lead. Now we have different expectations, different drives and different arousal cycles, which is why we wanna circle back to that word anticipating. For years, Russ and I would go through the dance of asking if tonight was the night. The dance of him being vulnerable and being told no naturally was frustrating. And this recommendation was made to us, so this may not be for everyone, but it was our counselor who suggested for us to schedule sex. Immediately, I said, no, nope, not doing that. We will have sex naturally. Well, if you recall, that wasn't working before, but it still took me a couple years to take this advice. Finally, I told Russ, let's give it a try. An important note, this is something our counselor felt would be good for us, but it's not necessarily the answer for everybody. And for us, this was a game changer. No more asking, no more declines, no more frustration. What we experienced was more anticipation. And as awkward as I thought having scheduled sex would be, we came up with nights that were sexual and non-sexual. For example, knowing a snuggle for me would just be a snuggle. Now both of our needs were being met and no more rejection conversations for us. Side note, remember, you're the only chance your spouse has for romance, so don't neglect this important relational need, honey. <laughs> for sure. And you're the only chance your spouse has for sex, so don't neglect that either. <laughs> we hope these thoughts on emotional, spiritual, and physical intimacy have been helpful for you. And we hope that this session will pave the way for you to have conversations that lead to greater intimacy and closeness. Here's one final thought as we close. The goal in intimacy is to experience oneness. As married couples, we don't drift into experiencing this type of oneness. We have to pursue it. It's our prayer that you would experience oneness in your marriage, and it's our sincerest hope that these sessions have provided both tools and a roadmap for you to follow in pursuing oneness. If you've been married any length of time, you know how challenging the quest for intimacy is. Intimacy doesn't happen by chance. It's the result of intentional and consistent investments in each other and a willingness to be emotionally vulnerable. Growing marital intimacy probably means you'll have to learn new patterns of relation to each other. That may be awkward or embarrassing at first, and that's okay. Carve out time in your schedules to continue to develop your relationship. Be creative and have fun. Enjoy sex 
often. Win the heart of your spouse like you did when you first were dating. Encourage each other to grow spiritually. Live a great romance. Wives, if you find you're struggling to connect with your husband on an emotional, spiritual, or physical connection, I've designed a workshop just for you. If you'd like to discuss, please visit this page, wiveswhothrive.net, and at the very bottom, you can leave your email address on a waiting list, and I'll be sure to reach out to you. Remember, to have an extraordinary marriage, be intentional.